Um, we're going to open up the meeting of the Housing Trust Fund Corporation. We have a quorum with Chairman Ruman and Ms. Zucker present. Is there a call to order for the 317th meeting of the members of the Housing Trust Fund Corporation? Yes. And is there a second? Second. Yes, thank you. Um, first item is approval of the minutes of the meetings held on June 15 and June 25, 2015. Are there any questions or comments on the minutes? No, the yeah. minutes are deemed approved. Um, now I'm going to shift straight to the second item, the resolution adopting the amended bylaws. Uh, we have a proposed amendment um, that takes into account some additional um, personnel and the senior staff, uh, including Elizabeth Mallow, Ruth Ann Bizaskis, Meredith Levine, Diane Kayanaga, and myself, Adam Schumann. Um, we also have some changes uh, regarding the audit and governance committees, which are now broken out as separate committees. And we have a change to the bylaws so that um, resolutions by the board will be reported at the next board meeting, not confirmed, which will smooth out some of our approval process in terms of governance. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution amending the bylaws? So much. And is there a second? Thank you, Commissioner. The motion is carried. Um, and the resolution item three, approving appointment of the officers. Um, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Thank sure. you, Commissioner. Um, Mr. Smith, uh, we're moving to item four, the resolution authorizing the assignment of mainstream five-year voucher program to New York City Housing Authority. Thank Please. you, Mr. Secretary, members of the board. Uh, the resolution before the board proposes transfer of HTFC's mainstream five-year voucher program to NYCHA, New York City Housing Authority. Uh, in so doing, it will provide the people served by the program, the referral agencies they work with, with a single point of access that eliminates the uh, duplication of effort between the two agencies, folds this program into NYCHA's considerably larger mainstream program that they have. Uh, and from a cost-benefit uh, administrative standpoint for HTFC, it eliminates the program and financial management and reporting associated with having to uh, uniquely manage and report on this, this program. So it's better for the customers, it's better for the agencies. Do we have any questions? It makes total sense. Yeah. Okay, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? Second. 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 Motion is carried. Item five, thank you, Mr. Well, Smith. Mr. Garwood. Resolution authorizing an award under the Homes for Working Families program for 2264 Morris Avenue. Please. Hi, this uh, resolution is seeking up to $2.24 million of Homes for Working Families funding for uh, 2264 Morris Avenue, which is a supportive housing pro project as part of our MRT program, um, Integrated Supportive Housing in the Bronx. HFA uh, earlier today uh, awarded tax and bond financing and tax credits. One thing I'll note is we are asking for this amount up to 2.24 million, uh, but HFA has also authorized middle income program funds, which might um, supplant uh, 1.224 million of this homes working families. We're seeking awards under both programs to maintain flexibility of what we actually deploy. Um, do you have any questions? Okay, do we have a motion to adopt the resolution? Move. And a second, thank you. A motion is carried. Item number six, resolution authorizing an award under the Community Development Block Grant Program Award for Economic Development to the Town of Shelley. We have Mr. Leo. Good morning. Yeah. I'm here to uh, present a resolution for the approval of a $750,000 CDBG Economic Development Award to the Town of Shelby. Um, the Town of Shelby has requested $750,000 in uh, CDBG Economic Development Funds to assist Pride Pack Canada Limited in opening and operating a produce processing, packing, and distribution facility on a 13-acre site in the Town of Shelby. Uh, Pride Pack Canada has formed a U.S. entity called Pride Pack Medina LLC to undertake operations. Uh, Pride Pack has been operating successfully since 1983 and is Ontario's largest fruit and vegetable processor, currently exporting approximately 50% of its produce to U.S. markets. Uh, substantial new business with Lightman's Food Market, um, which is a popular 85-store supermarket chain headquartered in Rochester, uh, is driving their decision to open its first facility in the United States. 
uh, IPAC selected the town of Shelby uh, over competing sites in Pennsylvania uh, due to the incentive package provided by the state, which includes ESD, Excelsior job tax credits, an allocation of low-cost power from NIPA, and the opportunity to apply for uh, OCR CPG funds. PRIPAC will construct a 66,000 square foot facility in Medina uh, and purchase new machinery and equipment at a total initial project cost of just over $11 million. Additional capital expenditures are planned for future phases of the project over the next five years. Um, the proposed total project cost of $11 million will create 80 full-time jobs over two years with 64% uh, benefiting low to moderate income persons. Uh, the CDBG funds will be used to purchase machinery and equipment. Uh, the CDBG cost per job is $9,375. Each dollar in state funds uh, provided will leverage almost $15 in private funds. Uh, the salaries for the 80 jobs range uh, from $27,000 to $81,000. Um, the 64 low-mod jobs will range from $27,000 to $33,000 starting salary, and positions will offer full health care coverage. Um, again, I'm seeking a, a recommendation, and I would be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. I think it's great. Great. Well, thank you. Hey, do we have a motion? So a second. Resolution is carried. Uh, item seven, resolution authorizing awards under the Community Rural Community Investment Fund Program for Bellamy Hill Apartments. Mr. Fitzgerald. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Chairman Rubin, uh, Zucker. Presented for your consideration is a resolution authorizing the Rural Community Investment Fund Award for roughly $1,342,343 for the rehabilitation of Bellamy Hill Apartments, a 36 unit affordable rental housing project located in the town of Mount Morris, Livingston County. The rehab will result in the replacement of most major building systems, including the replacement of the project's existing electric heating system. As expected to reduce building operating costs, thereby reducing the ongoing demand for funding. Through HCR's Rural Rental Assistance Program. The project advances the Rural Preservation Project priority established under the CIF RFP. The financing plan leverages over $1.4 million in non HCR resources for the rehabilitation, and approximately 92% of total project costs is directly related to physical improvements uh, on the project, since there will be no transaction costs related to the transfer of ownership and no developer fees being requested by the applicant. Consistent with the RFP, the project application went under, underwent design, underwriting, scoring, and eligibility reviews, all of which were satisfactory. For all the above reasons, the Office of Finance and Development recommends this resolution for your consideration. I'd be happy to take any question you have at this time. I love it. It's been really hard to um, address the physical needs of the USDA portfolio in New York State. We look for lots of different ways to do it with bonds, um, tax credits, etc. I'm really glad to see this sort of simple touch with the CIF money to make this happen. Why is it so hard to do it? It's USDA. Yeah. It's not a challenge. <laughs> we have okay. done it. Well, I mean, for what it's worth, even even more credit to you and your team, Sean, because we mm -hmm. did, it's term recovery. We had to do something. I, it's all on the record. Who cares? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. We uh, we had to try to do something with USDA in other places, and it is you seem to have cracked the code. So congratulations. Well done. I'm sure they're a great agency, and they've got their own. <laughs> we have a motion. So we have, there's a lot of a, a motion. A motion. Yes. <laughs> Motions carried. Got it. Lots of emotion. Um, moving to item eight, Mr. Fitzgerald, a resolution authorizing awards under the Rural Community Investment Fund Program for Washington Court Apartments. Okay, well, this is kind of like deja vu all over again. Uh, this project is nearly identical in terms of the structure, team, and purpose to the Bellamy Hill project we just authorized. Uh, requesting a CIF award of up to $775,888. Uh, for the Washington Court Apartments, 24 units of affordable rental housing in the village of Carthage, Jefferson County. Again, replacement of the existing electrical heating system as part of a system-wide upgrade. Project going to uh, advance the rural preservation project priority under the CIFRP. Leverages 800,000 in non-HCR resources. 94% of total project costs going to physical improvements to the project. Uh, all. 
of reviews were satisfactory, and we recommend this award for your consideration. I have no questions. Any comments? Great, great workshop. Second from the commissioner. The motion is carried. I'm moving to item nine, a resolution authorizing awards under the public housing modernization program. Mr. D'Amico. Oh, and Mr. Mr. Colon, Colon. two for one. I'll turn it over to my extremely capable director of housing management, Rob D'Amico. Can we lend moral support to Rob? <laughs> Under the public housing mod, uh, what we're doing is we're, we're recommending the allocation of the remaining monies. <clears throat> We've got 1.7 million left. Uh, these are going to uh, actually three housing authorities. And let's start with uh, Auburn. The Malone Village, it's a very spread out job, uh, 188 units. They were built a few years from each other. This is one of those jobs that received uh, modernization funds about 20 years ago. And it's the only one that's been out of the funding loop for that, that period of time. So we're revisiting it. Because of limited funds, we want to get an AE on board to assess it. Our a and &E have done has done their preliminary assessment. Um, and that comes to $80,000. So that's a little work is for getting the preliminary report done and tying down the scope. Uh, Salamanca's uh, family development uh, is going into phase two. It's uh, one of those jobs where it's uh, quite intensive kitchen and bathroom work. Uh, we decided to bite the bullet this round as opposed to 25 years ago where we decided to keep the asbestos there and top it over. Eventually it ends up biting you, so it's biting us. And that's where we need the additional funds for. Uh, the senior development uh, job, Hillview Manor, has not been touched literally in decades. Um, but we did get some funds last year. Uh, we're adding to the, we're adding to, to uh, roof development uh, and community room rehab. They had a lot of uh, electrical work and elevator work that was done in the last cycle. Uh, Utica Housing Authority uh, is basically uh, phase two of uh, energy performance program, which is actually unusual in the modernization program. Uh, this is only the second straight one that we've had like this. Uh, they've gotten uh, Johnson Controls, who is uh, installing this work in a lot of their federal jobs, and uh, this will be the last, uh, this will finish this cycle for them. A lot of electrical uh, energy improvements on that timing, et cetera. That's it for the public housing model. Okay. So, questions on item nine? Is there a motion? And a second? Motion carried, and we move to item 10. Make a resolution authorize additional awards. Okay. Uh, drug elimination awards, uh, considerably smaller grant, uh, comes to usually about $400,000 a year. Uh, it's quite competitive. Um, we start with uh, Auburn Housing Authority. Uh, they have a playground that's been condemned for several years. Uh, so uh, it's a very well run, very well run job. We just finished, uh, there's a ribbon cutting for our sister project called Broken Manor at the end of this month, which you probably heard about. Uh, this has been, uh, this job has been out of the loop for a long time. Uh, it really deserves it. They do not have the funds for this kind of work for substantial playgrounds with safety servicing, surfacing, seating, et cetera. Uh, that's for 215,000. Greenberg Housing Authority, uh, they need additional uh, security cameras to the ones that were installed about two years ago. Uh, the other ones did impact crime. Crime is starting to creep up again. Uh, that's for 137,000. Kingston Authority, um, not one of our better. Uh, they're doing a tremendous amount of uh, public housing mod work now for the last few years. Uh, they're not good at uh, maintaining their property. They are living on a very small margin. Uh, they ask for a lot of things, but they're not great. Uh, we had to kind of help them out every time they apply for drug elimination. They want to replace sheds and stuff like this that has no bearing on this. We guided them when we found that there were vestibule door strikes, people were breaking through and getting around, so we included that in, uh, and also the door replacement at 65,000. Uh, an oddball is uh, Laurel Homes at uh, uh, North Hempstead uh, for camera system. 
this is North Hampstead has four restructured jobs. We usually don't um, give drug elimination money to jobs that are already structured, restructured because they've already gotten that infusion of tax credit and they're kind of rolling on their own. This is something where they were, the security cameras were or the old analog type. It got, just got left out over time. They're very close to a high school. The compelling thing was here that on all their other jobs, as soon as those cameras went in, it dropped like 40% drug dealing. And this, we just really tried to fit it in. Uh, it's not, we had to make it clear to them that we can't do this all the time. Um, but we're suggesting 125,000 for CCTV. Uh, NIAC, uh, same thing as uh, Kingston. We had to guide them to a scope of work. They had uh, an entry entry lock problem. Uh, they needed serious lock sets, not the kind that you can get through. They have a, uh, we're anxious to see this year the results. They're gonna be finishing the largest uh, single drug elimination program we've had, about half a million dollars. It was awarded uh, two years ago. Uh, there is a gang situation on the corner of the site uh, that heavily impacts that site, and it's been overflowing. The, the no-brainer was the uh, security lock sets, so that was a good supplement to that, 178,000. Yes. You know, that sort of begs a question. I was wondering about it. what to extent do we require the housing authorities have coordination with the local police force for marking things like this? At NIAC, we sat down with the police. It's totally coordinated. We won't even approve the plans and specs until they go over it. But uh, in North Hempstead, they are very tight with the police force. And their hands are tied because they don't have that, that camera access. But they are, all four of their jobs are very closely tied. Um, I just wanted to point out one, one thing actually, I, I learned this year on the drug elimination monies. Um, so historically that money was specifically allocated to programmatic uses rather than capital and, and Richmond would always sort of say he wished we, we could use it more for capital uses because we were approving programs that weren't necessarily in our purview like not the kind of things I mean I'm, we didn't know what what their effect was on drug elimination or not and um, Rob when I saw the proposals this year I asked Rob about this and he said no no a couple of years ago the the budget uh, I don't know if it was a budget bill or a statute um, change to allow, to explicitly allow these for capital programs and only for capital, which is which is really a, 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 a an improvement for us. Just sort of um, more in our more in our field, right? Exactly, we feel much more comfortable. Um, moving on to Salamanca, uh, a spread out hundred uh, hundred DU job. They're finally getting around to a new playground. We had to hold their hand. They're so used to doing. They're great people there, but they don't think big, they think really small, uh, unlike, let's say, Auburn. So we guided them to structuring a playground, which the place desperately needs. One little note about Salamanca is that last week, the executive director told me that the uh, two, three years ago, we installed a sophisticated camera system on the site uh, with, uh, actually, when I went there last over the winter, it was miserable outside. The display was great because we could sit in the comfort of the office before hitting every little part, and we could go over all the physical aspects of it. They, there's a, a Western Tier Drug Force. Uh, they made a major drug bust using exclusively our cameras. Uh, they did not want it advertised because it's an ongoing thing, um, but these were people half off the site, half in the site. They were able to clear a couple of uh, vacancy, shall we say, for legitimate people coming. So that was that was the first time I've heard a direct impact right there. Uh, lastly, Wilna Housing Authority, uh, very well run. Uh, they knew they need a new high capacity uh, uh, generator, basically, so they can use the community center for a home base for outages, uh, storms, Sandy has type of Second, second. second. motion's <laughs> carried. The, um, thank you. The, the next seven items are confirmations. We, a few minutes ago, amended the bylaws so in the future when there's a written resolution between board meetings, we just have to inform the board. But under the prior bylaws, you need to confirm, so this will be the last time. I need to actually confirm. 
So we'll go through these fairly quickly. Item 11, resolution confirming approval of the annual independent audit. By written approval on June 29, 2015, the members passed a resolution approving the annual independent audit and authorizing its submission and publication. Is there a motion to adopt the confirming resolution? So move, can we move them as a group since they're all confirmations? Good idea. Item 12, Resolution Confirming Authorization of Community Development Block Grant Program Award for Economic Development to Washington County. By a written approval of August 3, 2015, the members approved a resolution authorizing an award under the Community Development Grant Block Grant Program funds for economic development to Washington County in an up, amount up to 337000 to assist in the startup of the Cambridge. Item 13, Resolution Confirming Approval of SCQRA Documentation and Classification of the Environmental Impact of 58 North Pearl Street. By written approval on August 10, 2015, the members approved a resolution accepting the documentation for 58 North Pearl Street and adopting the recommendation that the project be classified as unlisted with a negative declaration. Item 14, Resolution Confirming Authorization of an Award under the Preservation Initiative Program for Seneca Street Station. By written approval on August 19, 2015, the members approved the resolution authorizing an award up to $2,372,361 under the Preservation Initiative Program for Seneca Street Station. Item 15, a resolution confirming authorization of an award under the Preservation Initiative Program for Petoff Garden Apartments. By written approval on August 19, 2015, the members approved a resolution authorizing an award up to $1,012,722 under the Preservation Initiative Program for Pet Off Garden Apartments. Item 16, a resolution confirming authorization of the use of funds to preserve a project in peril by disaster or other circumstances beyond the project's ability to remedy for St. Joseph's Housing. By written approval on August 19, 2015, the members passed a resolution approving an expenditure up to $40,000 emergency funds for the policy for the use of funds to preserve HTFC assisted projects imperiled by disaster or other circumstances beyond the project's ability to remedy for St. Joseph's housing. Last item 17, resolution confirming authorization of an award under the Low Income Housing Trust Fund Program for the Roosevelt Residences Project. By written approval on August 19, 2015, the members approved a resolution authorizing an award of up to $2 million under the HTF program for the Roosevelt Residency Project. So for all of these items, 11 through 17, is there a motion to adopt the confirming resolution? And is there a second? So moved. The motion is carried. Thank all you. Right. Next five yeah. items are informational <laughs> items. No board action is necessary for these items. <clears throat> item 18, review of authorized contracts under the Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Program. 19, review of SCQRA Type 2 Actions. 20, review of SCQRA's Conquer Summaries. 21, review of the Quarterly Report on Status of Multifamily Projects. 22, review of SCQRA Findings for Projects by the Governor's Office for of Storm Recovery. Okay. Last item, um, the amended bylaws created the Governance Committee apart from the Board, so it'll be meeting separately as the motion to call to order the Governance Committee. And a second, thank you. The Governance Committee materials are located in a separate book and will be circulated and uploaded to the laptops um, going forward as per the recommended best practices by the Authority's Budget Office. The only item on the agenda of the Governance Committee is to recommend for adoption the audit and governance charters, which you have. The charters are based on the charters of the 641 Lexington agencies and are substantially similar to the model charters provided by the Authority's Budget Office. For both the Governance Committee and the Board, is there a motion to adopt the resolution adopting the charters? Yes. Is there a second? second? Thank you. Any remaining items? Is there a motion to adjourn the Governance Committee meeting and the Board meeting? And a second. I will move. Thank you. And a second. We are adjourned. All right. Thank you. Well done, everyone. <laughs>